great. Welcome today to the webinar. Thanks for coming to this webinar and I'm glad you've made it. Here you'll find how the butterfly effect will alleviate your panic attacks and anxiety. Uh, stress, really, these are ways to go ahead and confront them. You're going to discover how this butterfly effect can help you feel good, giving you the happiness advantage, overcoming major limiting beliefs or limiting decisions, stress and panic attacks and anxiety. And it's very important that you recognize what these are doing to you, realizing what these do to your life, to your business, and you'll just discover the three things that you can do to break what's limiting you and actually sabotaging your life and get a handle on the pain. And by being here, you're motivated to get rid of them. And these are enormous problems to solve without overwhelm, stress, and frustration. And we want to recognize who this is for. That way, you guys recognize if this is something that's going to be beneficial for you, that this will help you. So let's take a look at this next. This is for those who have fears or situations that cause anxiousness and nervousness. Uh, if you're struggling to get through your day without happiness or satisfaction in your life, or if you're feeling so overwhelmed by anxiety that it feels like you're drowning in an ocean, like you're one breath away from drowning. I've heard it described this way so many times uh, that I wanted to include it here because it's a feeling of pressure of, of something on your uh, on your chest that doesn't allow you to breathe. So that's uh, that's something that we're going to go ahead and talk about and discuss uh, in this webinar. And in many times, uh, the person doesn't know why they're having this kind of anxiousness. And some even get to the point where it's a panic attack. It, it seems like it comes from out of the blue, uh, usually accompanied by shortness of breath, maybe dizziness or faintness. Uh, you, your heart rate, you feel it's increased and you might have trembling and shaking or hot or cold flashes and a sense of detachment. You know, other common symptoms include fear of dying or going crazy or the fear of losing control. These are very, very difficult situations to uh, go through. And this is who this is for. If you get frustrated with yourself and your self-talk is your own enemy because you need to have strategies to overcome that voice in your head. And criticizing, evaluating, and, and being all negative on you. Um, and it might even get to the point of having a anxiety to be around other people, social anxiety. And simply attending a business meeting, uh, this might occur to you, or going to a company party or being a place where there's a lot of people together can be nerve-wracking and intimidating. Some people with uh, this kind of social anxiety want very much to be social and fit in with everyone else. Their anxiety about not performing well in public is strong and tends to cripple their best efforts. And many times people will freeze up, especially when those uh, they're, they're meeting uh, are authority figures. They're particularly afraid that other people would notice that they're anxious. Have you been in that situation where you just feel like, I just don't want anyone to tell, can tell that I'm nervous, but your voice your your tone of voice, uh, maybe even you're, you get flushed. Uh, it just gives you away. And this fear uh, just feeds the anxiety and it grows and turns into a vicious cycle. The anxiety then feeds the fear and the fear back to the anxiety. So people with social anxiety uh, tend to avoid social situations as a result of the painfulness involved. So this is what we're going to be going through. In the next, uh, within the next 50 minutes, we're going to be going through these uh, these fears, anxieties, and really the simplest and fastest way to overcome your stress and anxiety, and and more items that go along with that. Because many times when you're stressed and anxious, uh, you can't look beyond that stress and anxiousness. So we're going to get into that. Uh, in the, within this next 50 minutes. How to make this happen in only minutes a day. This is strategies and steps that you can apply every day to support your uh, um, struggle with stress and anxiety. How to eliminate your mind from racing like crazy, virtually stopping the frustrations that your mind throws at you. We want to go ahead and focus on that and get a handle on it. Exactly how to do this by applying clear and actionable steps that will support your goals without the frustration, fear, and anxiety that have been hunting you down. 
and that have uh, uh, this kind of anxiety, excessive worries, uh, about more than one circumstance characterizes this anxiety problem. Um, and how do you take steps to go ahead and control it? And this is what happens when people get into a, uh, a, a cycle of continually worrying about loss, worrying about um, uh, losing control. Uh, and this happens also with PTSD. It's, it, it can get to that point with post-traumatic stress disorder. Someone who has been through a traumatic life experience you know, may suffer future anxiety and panic over it. And this, when you first hear PTSD, like in my case, uh, if you're like me, you hear it, you hear that, and you, you think of severe wartime experiences. Not only anxiety and stress, but they also uh, induce flashbacks and panic attacks. Other post-traumatic conditions and situations include uh, rape or sexual abuse, emotional abuse, and living with uh, or through an, a negative natural event. Uh, maybe with loss of, of, of life of family members, uh, of loved ones, such as a, a devastating earthquake or a hurricane. Uh, others have been struggling with drug addictions, uh, you know, either OTC over the counter or not, uh, alcohol addiction. And all, all of these become a heavy anchor in your life where you can't live your life <laughs> uh, without confronting these terrors that assault you every day. The only three simple things you need to have in place, which are timeless, these are will support you to get rid of these panic attacks and anxiety. So let's go to my promise to you. We spend hours and hours dwelling and ruminating and thinking and thinking and thinking on the negative and fearful things in our lives. We worry about what could go wrong instead of focusing and paying attention to the rational, the positive, and the good. So my promise to you is we'll get back to the rational, the positive, and the good. Uh, we need to train ourselves to focus on thoughts that will move us forward in the right direction. And we need a st statements in our lives that will get us there. Uh, one of the things is, if you pay attention to the tar darkness, you will never find the light. And too much thinking and analyzing just makes the problem worse. So let's get, let's get into my promise to you. We're going to go ahead and, and look at how to get it to achieve personal peace of mind and happiness in life. Uh, and this is important to do without overwhelm, frustration, anxiety, and stress. And let's go over this one situation that happens with little children. Little children think ghosts, goblins, and monsters are real. Why do they think they're real? Why do they ask the parents and why do they ask uh, mommy and daddy to go ahead and uh, check under the bed or check in the closet or check or leave the light on because they think they're real. And in the same in the same sense, your thoughts aren't real either in the sense that you create and reinforce them and the emotions that go along with them. Your thoughts are only what you decide to believe in and continually reinforce in your mind. This one's deep. <laughs> think about this one. Your thoughts are only what you decide to believe in and continually reinforce in your mind. And my promise to you is that we're going to achieve that peace of mind. And we're going to go ahead and take a hold of that happiness in life that you know you deserve. And one thing to keep in mind is there is nothing for sale in this webinar. Please, please, and please again, focus on the steps and the problems that are being presented so that you can use them for your benefit. This is for you to apply. My full interest is that you use these steps to alleviate your pain. Take full advantage of it. Look, you may feel that nothing works. And remember, some, so many people are struggling just like you and have overcome their stress, anxiety, depression, and panic attacks. You are not alone. Focus on this. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it's called the present. If you recognize those words, congratulations, it's great. You won the prize. That, that is a quote from Master Ugwe from the movie Kung Fu Panda. And it's very appropriate for what we're discussing here, what we're talking about. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery but today is a gift. 
That is why it's called the present. And I will have a gift for you at the end, the next slide. And what this, if this really sounds like you, let's go over some of the things that, uh, if this sounds like you, constantly frustrated because you can't figure out how to put all the pieces together. Uh, sometimes you even feel like you dread being alone at night and you don't even know why. Uh, you have a constantly running dialogue of thoughts, uh, like a diarrhea of thoughts that you don't want, that just feed your worry, worry, and worry. If you're tired of getting through the day, having very little satisfaction, you feel like everything is just the same old crap. Um, maybe during the day, your thoughts don't shut off. You just keep thinking, thinking, thinking. You can't remember ever feeling relaxed and calm. You're even asking yourself, what would that be like? You're always on edge. Many times, you don't even know why you're on edge, why you're feeling anxiety. And at the same time, you get frustrated because you feel anxiety and you feel worry and you realize it's in your mind that it's ridiculous and still can't stop yourself. Does this sound like you? You've been diagnosed with uh, GAD, Generalized Anxiety Disorder. You're bailing on plans at last minute. So, uh, this emotional fear and worry are so strong that you don't care if other people uh, are hurt or inconvenienced by something that you said you'll do, but then later you said you, you just bailed on it. You didn't do it. Feelings of shortness of breath, restlessness, or fearing new situations. If you had the inability to go to places alone and have panic attacks. Or some people don't even have to go to a place, even waiting for a loved one that's 10 minutes late. If you focus on the scenario, your mind just spins up the worst possible scenario with a horrific accident and you visualize concerned paramedics taking your loved ones to hospital and doctors and nurses are frustrated that the injuries are too critical and you're thinking, oh God, what am I going to do? And all this is playing out like a movie in your mind. The vicious cycle of anxiety and depression runs wild. You have fluctuations in mood, maybe hour by hour. Others have what they call good days and bad days. Some people might have better mornings or maybe feel better at the end of the day. You have that feeling of anxiety there constantly. It's your companion. Do you want to feel alive again? And at the same time, because of this feeling, you want to feel like you can have peace and certainty in your life. This is where I asked the question, how, how much is it costing you to stay where you are? What kind of life do you have now? And is this, is, is this where you want it to be? What are you missing out by not confronting your fears, your anxiety, your panic attacks, your depression? Are you justifying your life because of these, it's also common, but not universal, for people to feel anxiety, uh, that feel anxiety actually, to experience other problems, such as possibly getting uh, startled by anything or anyone or any noise, all of a sudden can never feel relaxed and have a, a feeling or a state of constant motion. Possibly spending most of the day focused, working, 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 only on work because this is where the only thing that seems to make sense in your life. Things at home are not, you try, try to avoid it. If you have peacefully calm down and relax, uh, and this is one part of overcoming this problem. Uh, We've got we to gotta realize that you're frustrated because you don't want to feel this way. And even if you have a handle or even if you have no anxiety and no panic attacks and you're not depressed, normal life will throw stress at you, throw stress at all of us. And if you don't have a handle of anxiety on your anxiety, normal stresses will aggravate your anxiety. And this could also be performing well at work and 
focus so much on getting something done at work and receive a sense of accomplishment even from it. But even so, all of a sudden, sometimes you find that work becomes drudgery. You push yourself to get things done. If work is perceived as a negative environment, you may not no longer feel fulfilled. And then worry takes place over these situations. As a result, the uh, anticipatory anxiety from going to work can become quite strong. And this could cause difficulties at home as well. Then you start looking at a wall in front of you. Excessive thinking and dwelling on the what ifs. This characterizes anxiety. And this, as a result, uh, you feel like there's no way out of the vicious cycle of anxiety and worry and become depressed about life and the chronic state of anxiety that you find yourself in. And this feels like an invisible barrier in your life and even an anchor that holds you back. And possibly you have that negative voice. And actually, we all have that voice in our head that tells us yes, no, or you're full of it. But you might hear that voice in your head that says, you're not good enough. You don't know enough. You're just fine the way you are. You're basically um, making you feel too comfortable. Or it kills your goals outright. You can't do that because, and it gives you a reason. A reason in quotes, right? You have the inability to shut the mind off. Uh, with that negative voice that's just criticizing constantly. It so incapacitates you because it, it's there, constantly talking. You're not worthy of what? Love, care, attention of those around you. At other times, you feel like the harder you work, the more frustrated you become. You know, talking about thoughts, some people get to the point where thoughts seem almost non-existent because they have such a tremendous anxious feeling in their chest and it becomes so dominant. They, they, the only thing that they think or, or about is their feelings of worry, of dread, of lack of energy, of loss, a loss of interest in life. Th these are all common thought processes and symptoms. Uh, many times there's no trigger or cause for these feelings, and you might realize that these feelings are irrational. Uh, you, you start learning about what this is all about and learning about these feelings, but nonetheless, the feelings are very rare, real, even though you understand that and mentally that they're irrational. Uh, and then you start trying different kinds of stuff, um, and then it seems like things become more complex. And at this point, there is no energy or zest in life. You, there's no desire to want to do much. And then you start losing your time, money, and health instead of increasing your time and your financial freedom with no solution in sight, really. So what do we want to do? We want to focus on, is, is your life, is this it? Is your life giving you everything you don't want? This is something that you need to focus on and understand where are you at now and is that where you wanted to be? So we look at this picture and you look at yourself and your life and think, am I at the precipice of my life? Am I at the precipice of my relationship with my loved ones at work? What is this costing me? Is this really where, what I want? And by not having a clear idea, I'm overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed there. The problems continue to overwhelm you. And these are really just symptoms. Uh, these are symptoms of your real problem. Uh, I mean, I, could, I can talk to you on the phone for less than 10 minutes and I can zero in on the major reason or reasons you're continuing to suffer. I've talked to people and I, I can see these symptoms and clearly identify what's keeping their anxiety and promotes their panic attacks. Many times clients are already aware of the pain and suffering and that taking care of the symptoms will not resolve the problem because really your problem is not the problem. And I'm sure you've come to realize that trying to alleviate symptoms will not get to the heart of the matter. And you know this because you have the wrong method in place. Uh, your strategies are what's gotten you here. 
you've been sabotaging your life without even knowing it. You've made wrong decisions in your life for the right reasons. And at the same time, these are not right decisions that are giving you peace of mind, significance in your life, or solid certainty in your decision because all that's actually left is stress and anxiety. You don't need to continue doing what you're doing. And that's why once you apply this formula, this butterfly effect, it's important so that you can overcome your anxiety. You can build a life that you want. Uh, you can have control of these panic attacks that stalk you and pounce at the worst possible time. And have a clear and present purpose for your actions. Uh, can identify the obstacles that you have placed in front of yourself to protect your deep inner needs. And identify these inner needs that are fueling your habits and fueling your actions and become a vicious cycle. You'll finally have the mental freedom that you want uh, that will free you to build your life in the way that you need and be able to build the lifestyle you know is possible, uh, the life that you want to actually have. You'll be able to do it without stress, frustration, overwhelm, and anxiety you are now living with. How easy it is to scale your positive emotions and feelings and build strong ties with your family, friends, and businesses and business associates. Here's the butterfly effect. The three steps that you need to know to build significance, certainty, and love in your life. These will provide the tools for breaking through to the life you want to live without the stress, overwhelm, and anxiety and frustration we were talking about. And really, some people will get to the point, of, what, what's the secret? There's a secret sauce here. No, the secret is there is no secret to these three steps. And you probably know about them now, but not the right way to apply them. That's me there uh, on the right, Coach Joe Rivera Cervantes. Only difference... Um, to now from that picture is I have a few more gray hairs than what you see there. I was at a public public speaking engagement there, uh, about 215 attendants. And I'm a husband. I'm married to a wonderful wife and I'm a businessman who is focused and had to overcome some frustrations in my own life. My wife can attest to the struggles with my anxiety and depression and they always, always seem to spill over and affected her. And she's been such an awesome support, an amazing support to me. I came to a crisis point several years, years ago when I, I took a ride in an ambulance for a stress-related panic attack in the middle of the night. It was horrible. It was, uh, it was so frustrating, that pressure in the chest, that inability to, to breathe. It felt like I had a heart attack. And the fear and anguish in my wife's face, that was, it, it was just horrid to just remember it right now and, and, and relive it. I remember I was feeling that way middle of the night, I don't know, maybe about one o'clock in the morning. I got up, I said, I'm going to grab, grab a glass of water. And I couldn't even hold the glass. Uh, I, I couldn't fill up the water. I, I just started like hyperventilating, thinking like I was going to pass out, I was going to, you know, faint. I walked over two rooms, uh, I walked two rooms over to the TV room and sat on my favorite couch thinking that that's going to give me some, but it actually, I, I still felt that panic attack. Um, and even my, my golden retriever was upset. You know, she sleeps at the, the foot of our bed and she came up, she got up and she came to, to see what was happening. And then she would go over to my wife and come back to me and she could feel the emotional stress going on. Something bad was happening here. I was uh, frustrated and looking for some kind of response because I could not I have to call emergency services. They did come and they helped tremendously, but I realized that I needed to do something. Um, if I didn't make drastic and subtle changes, my life I mean both ways there's a lot of details to it you know but I could have lost my life if I didn't make any changes so and tell you a little more about myself I'm originally from California in the southern part of California and for many years have volunteered my time and energies and experience having helped families over the years with spiritual and emotional support and I continue to volunteer my time to visit with families and couples uh, and individuals 
who are in need of emotional support and spiritual support. And by speaking publicly, I also inspire others to find joy and satisfaction in their lives, as well as identify the obstacles to the pain in their lives. Uh, so that's me in a nutshell, and then we're going to get right into uh, the things that I found helped me overcome this anxiety and depression and how I've helped others to do the same. So this has helped me also to focus on being a public speaker in front of several thousands of people several times a year. I do speaking engagements. And here are the three steps to begin your own butterfly effect. And before we continue on, you if you continue on to make and take these steps, it doesn't matter if you know what to do, if you continue to do what will not work, this will all stay in your head and it won't work for you. So it'll be a waste of time for you. I've seen this happen too many times to not tell you about some of these pitfalls. So uh, and look, this is, uh, this is not, a, uh, I'm not trying to browbeat you. Continually absorbed by our habits and we'll continue to suffer from them unless we recognize what, you, what they are. So some of these wrong steps that we want to identify is read more books, read more and more books, read more and more blog posts about the pain, about the anxiety, about the difficulties, about the obstacles. Doing so will feel good on your wounds because we, we let's face it, misery loves company. We don't like to suffer alone. So this is where I would uh, ask you to consider Jim Rohn. He's a, a writer and inspirational speaker who coined this phrase. Don't let your learnings lead to knowledge. Let your learnings lead to action. All it means is you need to apply what you learn, not just learn more of the same thing. And here's another wrong and difficult step. Uh, staying in your head, thinking and thinking and thinking about the problem, trying to fix it yourself, like spinning your wheels on ice and staying in one place. Um, you ask family or friends that have the same problems or similar problems as you, and they may or may not have any kind of positive results. It might be the same thing as reading a book. Uh, misery loves company. There's no solution, but you talk about the problem. Uh, advice is always good, though. Uh, good to have, and at the same time, you need to weigh it with your natural ability to judge if they'll work for you or not. Um, Advice is not always good. Advice is not always good to take. You have to uh, consider it and think how it will apply, if it will apply, and if it will be beneficial for you. And in order for you to do that, you have to calm your mind and really analyze this. Calm your emotions. We can illustrate it this way. Your mind is like water. If you can picture water, uh, when it is ag agitated, it becomes difficult to see through. Because if you allow it to settle, then the answers become clear. Remember, don't let your learnings lead to knowledge. Settle your mind. Let your learnings lead to action. And why is all this important? Because so you can have a better life. So you can have a life that you want. Focus on why this is beneficial for you. You don't want stress, anxiety, depression, to rule your life. You want to defeat your anxiety. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to get to because you can defeat your anxiety. You want to eliminate your stress so that you can handle your life effortlessly. And finding happiness, significance, certainty, and a loving connection to yourself and your loved ones is where we want you to be. And how I discovered these steps. I was frustrated with myself and how my stressed out anxiety was pushing me to a, to be a people pleaser, uh, to be with my business associate, with my family or personal life. And damn it, I could not take it anymore. That little joyride that I described on the ambulance, which felt like a heart attack and got me to seek out the answers to confront my stress and anxiety. If I didn't, the reality is I could have lost my life. If I didn't make drastic and as well as subtle changes in my life. And I read and studied for many years with limited success. Uh, some things that I learned is you need to take small, gradual steps. Don't kill yourself. I mean, you can't be perfect. Don't even try. 
You'll just strangle yourself if you try to be perfect. So here are the right steps that I took. I hired several coaches and mentors that thankfully helped guide me not through these turbulent waters, but uh, helped me to understand how to withstand them. Because of them, I've had many aha moments that have shaped this amazing butterfly effect. And some of the questions that they asked and that they had me uh, answer for myself, I, they couldn't answer them for me. I needed to answer them for myself is, uh, am I paying attention to the wrong things? Is what I'm thinking really accurate? Or is it just another habitual over-exaggeration? Are my thoughts always reality? Are they always telling me the truth? Or is my perception of what's happening, my perception of events, even if it's inaccurate, are they more important than the reality? A potential solution to these confusion, confusing questions uh, would be to analyze your perspective, where these questions are coming from. And when I feel low, I'm usually thinking way too much. So I was uh, got to understand that I needed to understand when my mind becomes racy and goes into overdrive, how can I stop it from thinking so much? I needed to have solution steps to do so so i was able to apply the following personal belief in order to get through all of this and i ask you to consider adopting it as your own as well i'm unstoppable and i'll do whatever it takes to get it done if you can sit up straight say those words with conviction and make them yours every day i'm unstoppable and i'll do whatever it takes to get it done this will help you overcome your anxiety. So these are some of the steps and some of the things that I learned with my coaches and mentors. And I wanted to share a few of these uh, tidbits with you as well. Um, so let's go to the butterfly effect. The understanding part is the easiest part. You know, virtually none of my students struggle with understanding the steps and the effect. Uh, when you see results, of doing everything the right way, this encourages you to continue on the same steps because so many have taken to heart these steps and applied them in their lives, applied these principles and made enormous changes controlling anxiety and depression so they don't control their lives. You see, you have to let go of the stuff from the past and some would call it let go of the shit from the past because it doesn't matter. Taking the learnings from the past and mold it into what you choose to be now, who you choose to be now. And here's the first step. One, recognize your internal self-talk, what you say to yourself and why. This is mainly negative and will put out your fire for change. Negative self-talk can become a vicious cycle. Um, Decide to break that cycle by using thought-stopping statements. Uh, that's what's important to do. Because if, if you think about your ne negative self-talk, whatever it is, if you have that little voice in your head that's um, going and just going all out against you and talking bad about you, imagine if you said out loud to others what that little voice, that inner voice is telling you right now. You'd be friendless. They would not take that crap from you. The put downs, the doubts, and the just plain ugly negative self-talk would put you in a home for the mentally ill and a double straitjack if you just continually said that whatever that negative voice said. This speaks to me personally because if you're like me, you've had that mental gremlin and goblin just spewing forth all kinds of nastiness. Um, I would call him the downer because he would always be just throwing... Uh, all this um, crap at me and seeing what sticks. Um, so you want to practice your new thinking strategies. Uh, we want to go ahead and drop it down into our bone marrow, into our deepest thoughts, down to our emotional brain so that we can put a stop to it. So that first step, recognize your internal self-talk, what you say to yourself and why. With that first step, let's use one of these simple strategies. 
that negative voice? Where do you hear it? I know it's in your mind. If you had to give it a physical position, where would it be? To the right or to the left of your head? Behind you? Wherever it is, listen for its tone and loudness. Now, change its voice to sound like Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. You could do it. You can change it because it's in your mind. It's your voice. Does it sound as intense and menacing? Of course not. It sounds funny now. You can control that voice by focusing on it. As this step st states, recognize your internal self-talk, then examine what you say to yourself and why. This is when you, when you have to ask yourself questions like, what can I control and what can't I control? You can control that voice. What exactly am I telling myself? What you tell yourself is part of your thinking process and your habits, your thinking habits. And by changing a voice like this, changing that voice to something that's silly, that's funny, you start robbing it of its power over you. The right steps will produce the right results. You want to nip it in the bud. You want to kill it, kill that voice. Because once you do so, you'll get to this second step. You'll understand to recognize the triggers to your emotions. These will either be hurtful or helpful to achieve your goals. Exactly what are they? Emotions are not thoughts. You control your emotions, not the other way around. So what are emotions? Some people use them to satisfy their their physical needs. Some people even use them like what it's describing here, using food, sex, alcohol, or drugs as a strategy to stuff depression, anger, and rage. These are coping strategies that keep that vicious cycle of destroying yourself rather than moving beyond the self-abuse. These still have control over you. And this is where you want to become more active to get out of the house, to change your physical position, to volunteer to help others, to talk to a positive friend, something construct, constructive that you want. Your mood will change as you become more active. Some people are constantly irritable, and that's the question that I present here. Are you constantly irritable? If that's the case, it's important to recognize this second step. Because if you are, it can be indicator of something deeper. It can be so common that you, in your life that you believe that that's just the way you are. Constant irritability is an emotional response, which is a sure sign pointing to anger boiling inside. Though you're doing a somewhat of a good job trying to manage it, this emotion still has control over you. So it's important to recognize the triggers to your emotions. That's step number two on this butterfly effect. Now let's go on to the next step. The third step, use positive and negative visualizations that will uplift you and make your life a happy one. Uh, some can visualize much easier than others and others have a harder time to picture the scenes in their mind without some discussion or priming, preparation. Uh, this is where you want to understand that visualization can help so much. And we can try this out together. If you can do so, uh, go ahead and, and do this. You can close your eyes if you can. Close your eyes now or later if you prefer. Like when you examine your life, if you think of things that have happened in the past, a good feeling, something that felt good, uh, meeting your significant other, um, that restaurant, or that party where you met them. Accomplish, accomplishments like learning how to drive, if you can picture being in that car, uh, learning how to drive, a graduation from a course or college or university, the thrill or excitement of starting your own business. What do you see? Is it in color or black and white? Are some colors highlighted? Can you visualize clearly all the colors that are involved in that scene? 
Who or what do you hear? What does it sound like? Is there music? Are people talking to you? That's important. Now, at the same time, once you take a look at it, that visualization, how do you feel? Do you feel some warm feelings in your chest or maybe a flushing in your face? Is a smile creeping up on you? Or is there a smile already plastered on you because of that feeling? Realize that your mind can't tell the difference from the memory to the reality. Your physical and emotional reactions are the same. These are some questions you have to tell yourself. If you're beaten, you are. If you think you can't do something, you can't. It's all a state of mind. What are you going to believe? If you think you'll lose, you're lost. That's what this means to you. You, can, you use visualizations to keep you stuck in your stress and anxiety. If you visualize the errors of your past and kick yourself over and over and over again about it, it's just going to keep you where you're at. This is the danger. Here is the danger. You want to realize that those negative visualizations and positive ones can help out so much. But the negative ones that you keep playing in your mind, no wonder you keep treading and walking down the same frustrating path. Too many times this is because you believe you're protecting yourself from repeating that pain by reliving it constantly. But all, it, all it's doing is providing more strength for that thought process. That does not work and will only keep you in the same place of pain, frustration, and stress and anxiety. This is where we wanna leverage everything we can. You wanna leverage everything you can to confront your stress, your anxiety, your depression. Uh, the reality is you need to have the courage and resilience to take action. And what is courage? Courage is facing your fears and taking action despite the fear. Remember, let your learnings not lead you to knowledge, but let your learnings lead you to action. And this is what happened with Jan Marie. And I'm going to go ahead and talk to, to you a little bit about Jan Marie, uh, Jan Marie's success story. She's a business person and uh, who is a, a writer and blogger. She's a wonderful, smart lady. Uh, we found stuck mental states, stress and frustrations that were hurting her business, uh, providing her focus support on creating an online course. And sometimes we just need to have someone there to help us through the obstacles and overcome them. Um, so many things were known and understood, but not applied. What were the results for Jan Marie? Well, Jan Marie created within weeks the online course, which was always delegated to the back burner, uh, all with manageable steps from her personal systems that simplified the final creation of the course. These were customized steps that helped her in her situation. Does it, is everyone going to have the same frustrations and difficulties that Jan Marie overcame? Of course not. But these principles and steps can be applied in to any situation. Um, in her case, she was able to continue forward and not only create this webinar, but many, many more. Let's recap. We've already gone through the three steps. And the three steps to your butterfly effect are, one, recognize your internal self-talk, what you say to yourself and why. Number two, recognize the triggers to your emotions. These will either be hurtful or helpful to achieve your goals. And number three, use positive and negative visualizations that will uplift you and make your life a happy one. Realize what that movie in your brain, I'm sorry, that movie in your mind is doing to you. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and add some more here. Number four, a couple of more steps. Understand external triggers to avoid as well as support that supports you to keep calm and sane. Uh, the environment is important to keep in mind. Your sleep, your sleep patterns, uh, the food intake. You can alter these in many ways to support your feelings of being calm and feeling uh, at ease and confronting pain and stress. Use herbal supportive remedies, for example, lavender oil, um, 
getting le using lavender oil and uh, heating that up, even smelling that lavender oil, putting a, a little bit under under your nose can provide a wave of relaxation to you continuously. Here's another step, number five. Others around you, you yourself may even not want to change. You're so comfortable with it. The panic attacks, the depression, the anxiety, it becomes a crutch to everything you do around you. And I've seen this happen many times as well. And this reminds me of a quote from Dean Jackson. Visualize this, picture this. When she transformed into a butterfly, the caterpillar spoke not of her beauty, but of her weirdness. They wanted her to change back into what she had always been, but she had wings. Powerful. You must invest in personal support. It can be a long, difficult struggle, many years of figuring out what to do. The lie is you have to live with your anxiety and your panic attacks and your depression. You have no control over it. You have to live with it. And you have two options to overcome your stress, anxiety, and panic attacks that can paralyze you. Number two shows up. You can get help from someone who's paid the price before you, or you can continue figuring it out on yourself, by yourself, and wasting a fortune and time, mental energy, and money. You want to understand your state of mind, your inner talk, and how you control it, how you can control it. That's the truth. You need to face your fears and understand your story understand how you see yourself. Otherwise, your strategies and mental focus are not going to help. So you want to invest in your personal support. Many people have gotten to rock bottom. And that's a difficult place to be. You've hit rock bottom. Yeah, it's important for you to understand this is not a place to live. This is a place to understand and uh Understand that it will support you if you do um, take the learnings of being at rock bottom. And they can be transformational and powerful. And if you've gotten to rock bottom, um, some will camp here and live here and, and make their whole lives revolve around being at rock bottom. You just have to live it, hit it, learn from it, and move on. You don't have to camp out here. Here's a metaphor. You're told you will need to fly this jet airplane for your next trip with your family. They're the passengers, they're in the back, and you are going to be the pilot in the pilot seat. Would you prepare and take off with a how to fly jet airplanes for dummies book in your hand? Or would you receive training, extensive support from a pilot who will show you exactly what you need to do. Even have him as your co-pilot for the first flight. Are you, going, are you doing so in your life? Going from book to book, finding some relief, but still having your demons show up to tear you and by extension your family down. This is what mentoring gives you. This is what, get, what gave me clarity. Clarity of where you are and why, if you don't change, you'll be facing the same exact problem that you've had for the last 10 years. You will actually be worse for the next 10 years. Leverage by having support, by taking small actions that will give you big results. Accountability, having someone there kick you, push you, pull you, do whatever it takes to get you to where you want to go. Focus. Um, there are so many stresses in, in our lives that many times the, the focus might not come and, and you need to have that kind of support. And you'll have a deep understanding internal of your internal workings. It, and this is where another metaphor comes to mind. If you live in a snowy and cold climate, you'll need to prepare yourself for living in these conditions. If not, the environment will win. You will die. If you live in a desert, arid, and dry environment, you will need to prepare yourself for living in these conditions. If not, the environment will win and you will die. Environment always wins. 
if you live with anxiety, depression, and panic attacks, and all of a sudden, the, all of these environment of triggers that surround you, and you don't prepare yourself when they suddenly come at you, you don't arm yourself, your stress, your anxiety, and depression, and panic attack will win. To the extreme of not only costing you your family and friends, but costing you your life, actually and figuratively, by being alive and not actually living. But you do have a choice. We all have a freedom of choice. We also have the freedom to live with the consequences of our choice. Are you willing to continue to be alive with your choice? Or are you willing to actually continue and start living the way you choose? Here's how I can help. Uh, I have set aside some time to speak to you personally and talk about how to apply the butterfly effect directly to your life and business starting today. There are many ways to support you and I, I could uh, help you with at least an hour talk. We I usually allocate about an hour, hour and a half uh, discussion time. And what's the cost? Free. This strategy session is really centered around you. However, I don't accept everyone that uh, requests a strategy session because this is who this is for. You must be committed to taking actions because you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You must be willing to invest in real personal change. If you are not willing to invest in your personal change, I can't make you do it. That is not my job. And this is who this is for. You must be willing to take those steps. You must be serious about doing it the right way. Uh, and not just feeding and believing your you know, bullshit stories that, that do come up in conversations, which are excuses as to why you haven't taken action. This is why I'm doing this. Uh, I have a need to share my experiences and breakthroughs. I've lived through the panic attacks. I've lived through the stress and the depression. And I adopt a principle of doing good to those that I, I can give from the information and the knowledge that I've acquired. If it's within my power to help, I will do so. I don't want you to keep living where you are. This is not a sales call uh, for this strategy session. I'm gonna help you clearly understand where you want to go, where you want to be, and what you need to do to get to where you want to be. Um, by clicking on the apply on the right or in the bottom of this webinar, you're gonna have that complete clarity as to what you need to do and stop doing in order to take control of your anxieties that are currently controlling you. Then if you want me to help you, and if I think it's a good fit uh, after this conversation or during this conversation, I might invite you to become one of my exclusive clients. Uh, but what you need to do is go ahead and apply for one. Uh, by clicking apply, you'll be sent to my forms page. In that forms page, um, you'll have five questions that'll help me understand your needs and tell me how serious you are to really fix this. If we work together, um, you'll be put through the same training that Jen Marie and my other successful students have been through. It's designed to help out, help you out of your depressing anxiety phases with a few hours a week by applying maximum amounts of leverage. I fully expect you to get results with the first call. And I want you to go to this website. You can click on the buttons or this is the website. Uh, coachingawesomeness.com forward slash success. This is not fluff. You don't need more information. You need clarity and step-by-step -step help and support for you to fix your life. Strategies that are customized to you. And this is normally where the question and answers are, are uh, usually done as part of my webinar. However, in this case, this is why I want you to click apply so I can personalize my responses for your benefit and not going on and on and on about more information. Uh, look, you don't have to go through this alone. I've been there. I've helped others as well. And it's a frustrating, difficult, and depressing place to be. I'm here for you to make your life a success, make your business a success. Now, take the action to apply. Spaces are limited. You need to apply now. I, I don't have time to talk to everyone and I want you to take advantage of this special gift of a strategy session with me. 
Go through the five simple questions on the form and press the, the submit button at the bottom of the form. You'll be sent to a um, calendar, online calendar with my schedule, and you'll be asked to provide two different dates and times where you'll make that hour or so, hour and a half time for us to go deep into how we can fix these issues, how we can go ahead and focus on getting rid of this stress, getting rid of this anxiety, this depression, um, getting rid of this uh, these panic attacks so that you can go on living your life on your terms and not let all of these other personal issues control you, control your life, and by extension, control your business, control your work, or control your family. So I'm glad I was able to spend some time with you and give you some um, feedback and some uh, direction so you can apply these steps to get to where you want to go, which is a, a happy and peaceful uh, life free from these frustrations and difficulties. Well, it was great uh, to be here on, on the webinar with you. Uh, make it a great day and make it a great evening and wherever you are in the world to your success.